Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and with the introduction of iOS 26, Apple added an all-new design language with liquid glass, changes to folders, translucency, and more, which continually seems to be changing. However, they also introduced many new features and changes, and many that are not as obvious, so I wanted to share with you over 10 hidden features or features you should know that you may not be aware of. Now, the first thing is ringtones. You can now finally set a custom ringtone. In order to do that, you'll just need to download the file to your phone so you can use the files app. So if I go into files here, you'll see that I've downloaded a ringtone. It has to be under 30 seconds long, or you'll actually need to trim it with a third party app or another app such as Luma Fusion. But if we press and hold tap share under share, swipe up a little bit, you'll see that we have use as ringtone tap on it and we can actually set it as a ringtone. So it says new ringtone. Let's tap on it here. So you can use that ringtone as your main ringtone now, or you could select whatever you normally would, but now it's easy to add that without going into the tone store or downloading purchase tones. Another new feature that's built into the phone app has to do with screening unknown callers. This is a great feature we've wanted for a long time. And if you go down into your apps, go into the phone app, Within the phone app, you'll see the option to screen incoming calls. Calls from unsaved numbers will be asked for more information before the iPhone rings. So you can actually have it screen them if you're not familiar with the number. They can give information, and if you see it on your screen and you want to answer it, you can then do that. The same is true, of course, with silent spam callers, but if I go ahead and call myself here with a number that's not known, so you'll see I'm receiving a phone call and it says, hi, if you record your name and reasoning for calling, I'll see if you're available. So you can see it's actually picking me up from the other phone that I'm using here to place the phone call. So you can see it's actually picking that up and then I can hit accept or stop it altogether. And it stops that phone call from coming through and just lets me know that I've received a call. There's also another feature built into the phone app that allows you when maybe you've been placed on hold to wait on hold for you and then notify you once they've returned. So if you place a phone call, maybe to someone such as Apple, so you'll see I've called Apple. If we go to the more option while on that phone call, we now have hold assist, get notified to pick up. So if we tap on hold assist, it's now using hold assist and it says holding call and it will let me know when someone picks up. So you'll be notified to pick up and you could pick up now or just forget it altogether. Now within the photos app, Apple continues to update this with some new features. Not only did they change the layout coming from iOS 18, we now have a new option that allows us to change the photo that I've taken. So this is of Yankee stadium. I took last Thursday at a Yankees game. You'll see here in the upper right that there's a new option tap on it and it will make a spatial scene. So it takes a moment and now it has 3d depth to it. So you can sort of look around, see what things looked like and it creates sort of a depth map. So it looks like it's deeper into the phone. So this is something you could set on the lock screen as well, but that gives you an idea of what it looks like. We'll try it with one more. And so here's a photo my wife took where she was recently on a trip. She went to Bucky's to get some gas, tap the button here to, for spatial scene. It will take just a moment to analyze it. And now you can sort of see how you can look past it. So it makes sort of a parallax effect, but also with 3d depth. So that's something that's been updated that you may want to try out if you're not familiar with it. Now, many of us use our phones as alarms every single day, whether we're traveling or at home and something they've made that's changed that may help quite a few of us has to do with the alarms. If we go down into the clock app within the clock app here, if we go under alarms and tap on an alarm that we've set, so let's tap on this one, we now can change the snooze duration. So if you're someone that regularly uses snooze, you can actually change this now from one minute all the way to 15 minutes. So if you wanted to snooze longer, you can do that. Or if you wanted it to be shorter and alarm you more often, it can do that as well. So it's small, but definitely something that's helpful. Now this year, Apple has changed Safari a little bit. We have a new address bar down at the bottom and many of us may not like this. You can now customize this in iOS 26. If we go into our settings, scroll down, we'll go into our apps and then Safari. Within Safari, if we scroll down, you'll see tabs. We can now change it from compact, which it currently is, to bottom or to top. So if we go back into Safari, you'll see the address bar is now at the top. If we swipe back here, we want it at the bottom. We can now have it at the bottom. We can change it back to basically the style we had before, or just leave it as is with the default for iOS 26. 
Also something else you can do in Safari is if you want to get into your options here, but you want to do it a little bit more quickly, double tap the three dot menu and you'll go right into your tab view. Some people have said that it goes into a different view. I've only ever seen it go into a tab view. Some have said it goes into bookmarks, but you can see here, double tap and it goes into a tab view. And then of course you have your options here. So it's just a quick way to get into that. If you want to do that instead of tapping and then tapping again and selecting different things, you can double tap now. Now control center is super helpful. And especially if you want to customize it, you can add what's specific to you. If we go in to add a new control and then we scroll down all the way to the letter letter R here, we now have the option to add a reminder directly from the control center. So if we want to add a reminder without finding the app or using Siri, we can tap on it and then add a reminder. So you can do that directly from here, add a new reminder, remind me tomorrow that I need to make a video. Then we can set it, select a date, and then just select it and you're done. You no longer have to go into the app. You can just do it directly from the control center. So it seems like it's something that should have been there from the start, but it's definitely convenient. iOS 26 brings quite a few new AirPods features as well. However, there's one in particular you may want to take a look at that doesn't necessarily relate directly to AirPods, but anything that's connected via Bluetooth for audio. If we go into settings, then we go down to general. Under general, we go to airplay and continuity. You'll see it says keep audio with headphones. This is a new option that says when using AirPods or other wireless headphones, keep audio with headphones when other devices like speakers or cars connect to the phone. So maybe you've used your AirPods, you're getting in your car, it connects via CarPlay, but you want to continue to use your AirPods, you could do that. So it will no longer automatically just jump to your CarPlay or a different Bluetooth device. It makes it much more convenient. So Typically this would happen in cars, or maybe you're just using Bluetooth audio in a car. It will stay with the AirPods as long as you have this selected or any currently connected Bluetooth device. And to go along with music, if we go into the music app, we have some new options. You'll see, I have an album here from NF press and hold, and we can now pin this to the top of our albums. So if we go back home, We'll go to our library. You'll now see it pinned at the top. You can do this with songs, albums, or anything else. So maybe we want to go to this album here. Maybe we'll go to this. We'll go to the album. There we go. And now we can actually pin it at the top. So we can pin this album as well, go back, and now you'll see it's pinned. So super convenient and something they've added. Something I would recommend that you try out if you're not familiar with it has to do with when it goes from one song to another. We've long had the option to crossfade from one to the other, but something else that's great is called auto mix. If we go into our settings, if we go into our music settings, scroll down to where it says song transitions, where it says off currently, make sure that's turned on. Instead of crossfade, try out auto mix. Songs will transition at the perfect moment based on an analysis of the keys and tempo of the music. So this is something I've heard for the first time when I first installed it, it seems to work pretty well, but basically maybe you're going from pop style music to something else, maybe such as country, it will match the beat and key and sort of transition like a DJ would rather than what you would do just from crossfading the songs. So definitely worth trying out if you haven't already. Within music, if we're listening to a song that's maybe not in our native language, whether that's Spanish, French, or something else, we can go into the song, tap on the lyrics button. If it has lyrics, it will have the option sometimes to translate those lyrics. So if we tap on this, we can show translation and now it adds it underneath. So if I turn this down, press play, you'll see that you can actually see the, the translation below it. And if we scroll up, you can see all of those. So depending on the song, they don't all seem to have this just yet, but mostly anything that's in Spanish, you'll see this. So just look for that translate button and you'll have the option to hide it or show it and turn it on or off. Now, if you're taking a photo or video and sometimes your image is blurry, it can be due to the lens being dirty and needing to be cleaned. While I typically clean this regularly, there is a new option here to let you know that maybe it's too dirty and you should consider cleaning the lens. You can find that within settings and then under camera, scroll to the bottom, you'll see a new option for lens cleaning hints. It says displays a suggestion when the camera lens should be cleaned to improve image quality. So if you turn this on, hopefully it helps you prevent getting any blurry photos due to this being dirty and you didn't know. So that's something that's a nice little feature that will let you know a little more information. There's also a new update when it comes to battery. So maybe you're using your phone and you want to get the best battery health, but also the best life as well. Within the battery settings this time around, 
If we go to power mode, depending on the phone you have, there's a new option for adaptive power. It says when your battery usage is higher than usual, iPhone can make small performance adjustments to extend your battery life, including slightly lowering the display brightness or allowing some activities to take a little longer. Low power mode may turn on at 20%. So low power mode is typically designed to be used at 20% or lower so that you can get back to a charger in time. This will adjust that throughout the day and adjust based on your usage to help you get the best battery life. So I would recommend using that if you go through a lot of battery. Also something new on some of the newer phones has to do with letting you know when it will finish charging. If we plug in the phone here, we'll go ahead and give it a moment. It will tell you at the top or sometimes here, if we go in here, it says charging and it will take three minutes to reach 80% and one hour and 16 minutes to reach 100%. This of course is slower as you go higher in the battery and you can see this on the lock screen as well. However, it sort of just blinks through and then goes away. So it's something I wish was more persistent, but at least they're showing you the actual time to charge. So there we go, two minutes to 80%. So something that's just a little bit nice that you weren't maybe aware of, or maybe you've seen it already. Now, if you're someone that regularly records your screen, maybe you're placing that on videos, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, or other places, when you record the screen, you can now do that in HDR. So if you prefer HDR videos, you can find that in settings, then general, then scroll down to screen capture. And we now have the option for the format to be in HDR or SDR like it currently is. So if you want to use HDR, you can do that. Also, you of course have CarPlay screenshots in here if you want to use that and full screen previews for your screen capture as well. So if you want to use those, make sure they're all enabled, but you can switch between HDR and SDR now as well. Now, if you're using Apple's built-in password app, this is something that works great, but maybe you want to use a third-party app as well or just switch altogether. If we go into passwords, unlock it, then go to the three dot menu in the upper right. As long as you have a third party app installed that can receive this information, maybe that's one password, last pass or another, you can then export data to another app. So tap on export, select the password you want to export, and then you can select those and export them to your favorite app. So that's a nice option. You can do the same with pass keys now and everything else. So if you want to maybe move that information out of here or just have it redundant somewhere else, you can now do that. And so those are many of the new hidden features in iOS 26. There's many more that we could talk about in future videos, but there's quite a few things all throughout nice changes, some convenience updates, and much more. Let me know your favorite features of iOS 26 in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.